Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at Node-RED installing the software. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. The link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start your video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So we will now be installing Node-RED software on our Windows 10 computer. And Node-RED is a powerful and easy programming tool that will allow you to join together hardware devices APIs, which are application programming interfaces, and online services. This joining of information is part of the Smart Factory. Um, you'll also hear uh, keywords like Internet of Things, Industrial Internet of Things, Industry 4.0, and Smart Production. Just a few other labels that they've been using for this type of technology. Now in this series, we will be using Node-RED in some of the following ways. Connect to our industrial equipment through Modbus protocol, displaying information on a user interface, HMI or dashboard, um, log information into a database. We're gonna view information in the database through spreadsheets such as Excel. So let's get started with installing Node-RED. And what you'll see up on my screen here is we have the Node-RED organization website where it will go through the basics and fundamentals of this flow-based programming package. So we go through here and you can see that you know it's based on Node.js. We have it's a social development tool for the Internet of Things. And getting started, you can run locally. You can run on a device, a device, or you can run in the cloud. We're going to run locally, so it goes up here, and it will tell you how to get started with doing that. So our application is actually Windows, so we're going to run on the Windows environment, and it gives you a quick. Uh, start so we install node.js it says to download the latest um, or download 12 12 x lts version of node.js so node.js if we look at the supported node versions we have it right here and you see that the recommended version is 12 point uh, x which is the recommended version that's why it's saying to do that so if we look at node.js You'll see right now we're up to 15. So we have to look for downloads. And then we'll go previous releases. And we'll go to Node.js. And version 12. And what we're looking for is because we have a 64-bit uh, computer here, we'll use the 64 MSI. And we'll click that one to download that data. So that's our inst install file. So let's go ahead and we will uh, run this file. And it brings up a, a wizard here. So we're going to start that. We're going to accept the terms of the license agreement. Our location, I'm just going to change this to our D drive. And we're going to install this with all the defaults. Um, we will also um, uh, create all these scripts if we want to and then we'll just hit install so this is now installing node.js on our windows based computer So it's relatively uh, quick to actually do the install. And then we hit the finish button. And we have a, a bunch of additional tools here. Okay. So it installed uh, other devices as well. And that's the end of Node.js. Now what we have to do is install Node-RED. So install Node-RED, we have a back to running windows and we have to look at a command prompt and type in this variable here or this uh, string so let's just do that call up a command prompt here there we go and let's just type that in hit enter 
It's unrecognized. So that means that if we have to, let's just go to um, Node.js command prompt. There we go. And we'll put that back in again and execute. And now what we're doing is installing Node Red. There we go. So we had a few warnings, but everything looks like it installed packet or corrected or correctly. So Node Red version 1.29 is now installed on here. Now, in order to actually run Node Red, we actually have to type in Node Red. So what it does is it will load up our flows and our default, and you see here it started the flows. So there we go. Now, in order to actually see those flows, what we do is we go to the web browser and we go to um, our local host. So which will be HTTP uh, backslash backslash local host and then we put in colon 1880. And this now loads our flow in the flow based. So Red Node provides a, a browser based flow editor. And this provides an easy way to visually see and modify your, your program flow. Flows can be deployed uh, to a runtime in a single click. And Red Node is built on Node.js as we indicated. And this lightweight version of the runtime can deploy it on low cost hardware such as a Raspberry Pi or cloud services. And this has the ability to bring data collection, analysis, storage closer to the actual device that you're using. So real-time edge computer can be achieved without uh, latency issues that we had previously. So if we look at the um, actual programming area, what we'll, we'll have here is we have our palette on the left-hand side. We have our header here with our deploy button. We have our sidebar over here on the right. And then we have our main workspace located right here in the center. So if we look at the actual uh, left hand side, this actually shows us all of our different nodes that we currently have as a default that we can use in our programming. And we can filter those out, we can actually uh, type in and uh, and filter those things out as we type, and then we can bring those onto our main workspace. Now our main workspace is the where we're actually gonna be um, doing a lot of the actual work itself. So throw the uh, timestamp in there. We can actually throw a debug in there. And as we can see, we can just join these uh, devices up. Our workflow here, this is our flow. This is one page. We can actually, through this tab up here, we can actually add more pages. We can use this one to actually uh, list all our flows and go back to a certain page. Um, if we want, we can eliminate this, this one here and just hit delete. If we want to make things bigger, we can go down here at the bottom of the screen. You'll see a plus sign, make that larger. We can also return or uh, reset the zoom. We can go smaller or reset as we said. If we lose where we are, we can actually hit this map and we can move that back over to where our flow actually is. So very nice user uh, uh, way of getting around on our main um, workspace. Over on our uh, sidebar, right sidebar, you'll see we have a number of series of tabs. So if we click on say a timestamp, we can actually go to the information and you can see that you can get the help files for that. We have debug mode, um, we have configuration mode. So there's lots of different information that we have located here without going and digging up through manuals. So 
very nice uh, options here. And then finally we have on along our header, we have our deploy button. So here's my timestamp going into my message. And if I hit deploy, what it will do is it says successfully deployed. So if we were just to click on the message box, look at our um, debug here, and then we inject our timestamp. You can see our timestamp now goes over here and we can actually view this and as we click through, it tells us what the actual uh, values are right? in different sequences of that number that we put in, which is a timestamp. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.